Hello. 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 You are now muted. You are now unmuted. Hello, everyone. So this session has the Etherpad. And I think we will wait a few more moments for people to show up. But there had just been two parallel sessions, and so they might need some guidance on how to get there. Yeah, there are a few more people in the Etherpad already, so I assume they will hop over shortly. In the meantime, I encourage you to actually have a look at the Etherpad and browse through it and engage with the content there, because if you do engage with the content there, that can help me uh, basically prioritize structure the section. Okay, so um, I think I'm going to start by sharing my screen. Okay, now you should be able to see my screen. Can you please just confirm? Someone's typing. Thanks, Chris. Okay, so um, I will just use this Etherpad as a basis for running this session. Um, I know that there was a session on Wikipedia's coverage of uh, COVID-19 just before, which I attended. I don't know whether people who are in this session attended that previous one, so I uh, will do a little bit of overlap, but the focus will actually be different. So, um, and also I took notes in the previous session on uh, a number of things uh, which helped me build the structure of the document further, like below line 24. And we could actually start from any of those points. So if anything there strikes you as interesting, then um, we, we can talk about that or start from there. Um, I would like to um, actually start with something that is not something to be proud of for uh, Wikidata, so a bit of vandalism that I just discovered uh, during the previous session. So, um, because, uh, and the reason I'm presenting this is because this gives you an idea on how things, uh, like how quality control works. So here I am on this um, item about something which has this identifier and this label, COVID-19, so uh, it claims that COVID-19 is a journal, scientific journal. And um, also the item for this was started in 2014, which already should uh, raise some eyebrows. And there's another thing here, um, a tool, a red flag essentially, that uh, goes up here. And so uh, th this red flag links to the version history. And so we notice, oh yeah, someone actually on 17th of January, so more than a month ago, uh, came in here and changed the label of that particular um, journal from tuberculosis, which is its real title, to COVID-19. And since this is incorrect, I'm go now going to revert this just to show you how uh, this works. So it's just clicking a button while you're logged in. And then normally, uh, whenever you're doing an edit on Wikipedia, you're supposed to write an edit summary in Wikidata, these are mostly automated, but for things like um, the uh, like these reversion from vandalism or so, uh, we actually can put in a, uh, a comment. And very often people just put in RVV, reverting vandalism, um, but uh, that is kind of an inside uh, side of thing. So I'm, I'm I'm typing it out now. And uh, now the information is correct again. We can actually check that. Um, so for instance here, we click on 
some random database and here hello tuberculosis yes um, and the ISSN so that's the way uh, the journal should be referred to on the other hand I would actually uh, find it interesting uh, to see whether there is an actual journal uh, about COVID-19 because by now the subject should be notable enough to merit its own journal um, on the other hand by now essentially any existing journal has published about COVID-19 and uh, so this would be interesting to see how things go so we have started the session by fixing an error in Wikidata um, and now we want to go in and um, yeah we can say this was fixed um, we can go in and then uh, discuss some of the other sessions so in the abstract I pointed to a preprint and uh, that would be one way of organizing this session on the other hand uh, we can do it a bit more free floating and which is my preference and there is also a the preprint is quite long <laughs> um, it's I think 38 pages in the most recent iteration and quite densely written and so we will only focus on the um, images and tables anyway um, but uh, there are some other interesting ways of browsing things so um, but now in especially for those who were not in the previous session I will give a little bit of a background so how all of this um, like fits together so if you want to know about the Wikipedia coverage of the COVID-19 pandemic which was the content of the previous session here is a Wikipedia article about it which might seem self-referential but it is referenced with external articles like uh, let's check that so here uh, someone else the New York Times, for instance, wrote about Wikipedia's coverage of the COVID-19 pandemic. And so these external articles are then referenced in the Wikipedia article to um, highlight or describe how Wikipedia responded to the COVID-19 pandemic. That's one thing. Then uh, here is this template that Neta also was talking about. Um, so let's have a look at that. Uh, this is a screenshot from April when the template was uh, in a much different state, much less developed than it is now. Um, so it links to, so this, this is, we're on Wikimedia Commons now, which is the media repository that is used by all Wikipedias and Wikidata, the entire ecosystem. Then from here, we are back on the English Wikipedia on this particular template. And uh, so it's, this is a giant piece of, uh, templating uh, and so it has lots of sub and sub and subsections uh, I'll maybe I should not open all of them so but let's see just to give you flavor um, so this is the template that Neta was uh, talking about it originally we just had one article essentially just about the disease here and then the, the, the virus, and then the pandemic, and then from that, uh, all the rest uh, was flowing. Uh, so we have articles about, for instance, disease X, which is a term that the World Health Organization is using to describe an unknown disease that might cause a pandemic. Um, and there's a bit more of uh, background information. Then we have locations, basically here, Cape Verde. So that's... COVID-19 pandemic in Cape Verde and and so on so for any kind of location you can think of um, including Antarctica cruise ships and naval ships um, and, and, and so on um, and here we have all sorts of impacts that the pandemic had on certain things um, including Wikipedia which was this Wikipedia's response um, also uh, flattening the curve or in environment uh, or the impact on military or science and technology all of this is here then health issues actually mental health is one of the things I want to zoom in on uh, Neta already mentioned that a vaccine related misinformation might be a big one uh, to deal with in the near future mental health is also a big one um, and so here you have the article about mental health during the COVID-19 pandemic you see this exists in about 10 languages also like on any uh, Wikipedia article you can get from 
here to the Wikidata item about this. So here you have uh, basically full text, free text, uh, and here on Wikidata you have structured information about uh, this. Not a lot of structured information here, it's just a subclass of mental health, it's a facet of a health risk. So this could be really um, made much more detailed. The reason I'm going here is because on Wikidata you can then uh, look things up in a different fashion uh, by not just looking at the information that is on this particular page, but by binding in together information from multiple uh, different pages. So, um, and we have a tool for this called Scolia, about which I gave a talk on Wednesday. Um, so I'll not go into detail right now, I'll just use it to explore some of the issues related to mental health during uh, the COVID pandemic. So um, we are now on a tool, essentially a profile page uh, that it, for its first part looks very similar to the Wikipedia article with the main difference being that there is this identifier going around here, which is the same identifier that we have on the uh, item, like the Wikidata page for this concept, which, and this Wikidata page also links to all those uh, 11 Wikipedias that have an entry on this specific topic. So now, uh, Scolia gives us an overview of uh, this particular topic in its own context. So, um, yeah, it's a subclass of mental health. Um, it's on focus list of Wikimedia Project, Wiki Project COVID-19, which uh, I will talk about more later. And it's a facet of health risk, as we had already seen on that page. So what it also gives you is a set of recently published works on the topic. Actually, since we're at the end of February, there's a, a little lag here. So some weeks are missing. This is, um, yeah, because the creation is always incomplete because this is volunteer work. Um, but uh, you see there, there is, at least there is some content that's uh, not too, too old. And you see some uh, visualization of how many publications there were over time. Of course, since it's COVID-19, uh, the earliest you could think of was 2019, but no, nobody published about that in 2019. And uh, so, yeah, we, we have a little bit in 2021 as well. Uh, this is essentially the same information again in the other order. You see authors that are um, that have published a lot on this particular topic, on the topic of mental health issues related to the pandemic. You uh, see their co-author graph, um, and you also see which topics co-occur with that uh, topic. Of course, uh, COVID-19, COVID-19 pandemic, mental health, the virus itself, pandemics in general, but then Italy, uh, sticks out, pregnancy sticks out, social isolation, uh, and also the next pandemic, which is the theme of this uh, disease X kind of thing. Oh yeah, next pandemic, maybe that's something worth actually showing. Um, so even though we don't really know much about the next pandemic, um, we can already annotate the literature about this. Um, so by looking at publications that have actually investigated uh, either um, like past pandemics or uh, pandemics in general, certain um, properties of a set of pandemics and then made projections about what to do in the future or what could be improved uh, for the future. And while this uh, profile is loading, I will continue going on with the profile about the mental health issues during the pandemic. So here we had a table of the um, topics that co-occur with that particular topic, which um, include also things like Italy. Uh, here we uh, show the graph of those um, topics, how they are interrelated. And some of those topics have a geolocation like Italy, and uh, so we can plot them on a map. So uh, even though uh, we know this is a pandemic and it affects essentially um, most people on the planet kind of, um, here the coverage is rather sparse. Um, which might be for many different reasons. Most likely the uh, information is just incomplete in Wiki data. Uh, it's all work in progress and we can think about how we can improve those workflows so that the information gets more complete. Um, yeah, uh, at, at the upper part of this profile, we had a list of authors just by the number of publications. And here we have a different rendering that also takes into account the citation graph, but the citation graph 
is also not very uh, complete yet, and so these two are almost identical, um, but not entirely. Um, an important thing is the correction page that uh, I'll show later on. Then uh, we get an idea about the journals uh, which publish on the topic. So Asian Journal of Psychiatry uh, is kind of very prominent in, in this mental health issues about COVID-19. Uh, then, yeah, most cited uh, works, most cited authors, and uh, then also, yeah, a map of organizations associated with works about the topic. That's already interesting. So here you notice on, on every continent except Antarctica, we have uh, some people who uh, have published on the topic of mental health during the pandemic. Um, whereas in the previous map that we had seen of the uh, papers that are associated with that um, issue of mental health in the pandemic, we had only a few dots. Here, this is um, much more at least. Um, so yeah, the, the highest uh, values here, oops, the vi highest values here, this is London. King's College London. So they've published 20 papers on that particular topic that Wiki uh, data knows about. And then here we have Hong Kong 14. Yeah, so uh, that's that's a kind of scale. This is still very likely very incomplete, but at least it's more complete than the information we had before. And much of this is information that could have been curated even before the pandemic, because most of the uh, these researchers will not have changed their affiliation during that short period of time. And that's one of the, uh, let's say, basic layers of curation that uh, Wikidata can provide, where uh, working on one pandemic can actually um, facilitate work on the next one. Here we have a citation graph on uh, based by country uh, that is based on citations between papers on the topic of mental health uh, during this pandemic. And this is, yeah, very incomplete. You also get a list of um, awards that people have received who have worked on this particular topic, um, although most likely they did not get this re uh, award for uh, work on this particular topic, but it's it's interesting nonetheless. Anyway, so this was a brief rundown of how uh, Wikidata can render information about such uh, a topic. Now let's have a brief look at this uh, curation page. So this is a page that we use to highlight information that we know is incomplete or missing uh, from the, the profile that we just saw. So for instance, here we have a, a list of seven, well, basically the table tells us there are seven articles that have this topic uh, and uh, where the authors indicated that this particular string but not matched to an individual person that might have this as their name. And so we can use another tool that I've also demoed on Wednesday, I'm not going to show it here, um, to uh, try to identify which author uh, might, might this be, or if it's several with the same name, then we can disambiguate them. Um, and yeah, so we have tools that help us in identifying what are the gaps in the coverage of Wikidata, and uh, then this pr basically provides a to-do list for people who participate in the creation. The other thing I wanted to show is this next pandemic thing. So here also, yeah, we have something, um, lessons learned in the media about uh, maintaining ART. I don't know what ART is in this context, uh, but yeah. So specific lessons learned uh, from this pandemic that can then be useful for the, uh, the next pandemic. Also interesting, uh, people have always published about the next pandemic, right? But uh, this one really kind of sticks out. Uh, so there's one example, lessons to be learned from the present outbreak of yellow fever in Louisiana, 1905. Um, and yeah, we grouped this on the next pandemic because there, some of those lessons might actually still be relevant uh, for whatever comes next. And yeah, so the, the same principle applies. This is the same uh, kind of structure. Uh, this tool Scolia gives you by topic, you just give it this identifier and then you can browse uh, basically people who are most knowledgeable about uh, the next pandemic, which uh, might be people you, as if you're a journalist or a student or someone who wants to know about pandemic preparedness, um, these might be the people that you would want to consult. Okay, so that was one way of introducing the topic. Um, 
yeah, here we're, we're back on Wikipedia, um, which uh, will pop up a, a number of times uh, in the course of the session. And um, yeah, a brief remark while I, yeah, I see, <laughs> um, I see that um, several people are in, in this call here. I share my entire screen with you, so um, I, you see all that I see, uh, which means if you have comments or questions or anything like that, it would be good if you would put them in the etherpad, uh, because I don't see the big blue button chat. And um, if you do that, then I will use this directly uh, to guide the further, um, let's say, focus of, of this session. Otherwise, I will just uh, wander around those uh, links that I've prepared here. So um, another aspect that Neta was talking about briefly in, in her uh, talk was the um, basically coverage in, in Wikimedia Commons. So um, yeah, let's. So there's a a parent category on Wikimedia Commons which is the media repository, uh, which has lots of subcategories that are related to um, all, all sorts of aspects of COVID-19. And uh, we can also get an idea of how those data are used. So here is a tool that tells us aggregated um, statistics. It takes a while to load, so in the meantime, I'll go and discuss another one. It also takes some time to load. So here I picked one individual um, file. It's a video file, and you may or may not have seen this. So it basically provides an explanation of what R0 is, uh, the basic uh, reproduction number. And that uh, video was uh, created somewhere in March uh, last year and then it was quickly embedded in some Wikipedia articles on the matter and it has received on the order of a hundred thousand uh, views per day um, just that video um, not not the Wikipedia articles around it and so over time this is uh, this has amounted to several million uh, views and that's the kind of information that if researchers or World Health Organization or so are putting out uh, such materials, Wikipedia through its reach can really amplify that and bring it to uh, many people searching for this kind of information. Um, now the, the other thing, the other page is still loading. Yeah, there is a lot of data to process. So uh, we can look at uh, some other things. So. In, one way to actually summarize this session would be just to have a look at this particular graph. So I'll walk you through this a little bit and uh, even uh, enlarge my screen a little bit. So what we have here in the center, I'll make it even a bit, bitter, a bit bigger. So what we have here in the center is three main, the three main concepts. So the, the virus, the disease, and the pandemic. Uh, they all have their Wikidata identifiers. We have already briefly seen that, this and that one. And then they have different relationships between them. So for instance, the pandemic has caused this uh, disease. Uh, the disease has effect, this pandemic. And the has caused and has effect, they also have identifiers. That's just the, the way uh, Wikidata works. Everything uh, has an identifier and then we can attach information in multiple languages to that identifier. And the pandemic is different from the disease, and the pandemic is also different from the virus, um, and the virus has the effect of the disease, and the disease has the cause of the virus, and things like that. So this is structured information about these three things, and then of course there's many more things that could be said about them, uh, but what's interesting in terms of this particular visualization is that um, you can then go on and look at a number of other things that uh, exist in the world and that relate to these three central elements of, of the Wikidata coverage of the pandemic. So for instance, uh, we can look at humans. 
so there could be significant people that uh, are involved in uh, the, the, the pandemic or treating the disease, people who died of the disease, uh, uh, and, and so on. Uh, so that's some of the relationship or people uh, who were sick with this disease and uh, some of the relationships that could be between the concept of humans and the concept of this disease. Then uh, we could have the concept of disease. So uh, COVID-19, for instance, uh, could have certain risk factors. If you have certain diseases already, then getting this disease uh, is a risk factor for severe um, COVID-19, for instance. And, and so on. There's chemical compounds that interact with the disease as therapeutics, for instance. Clinical trials, lots of clinical trials uh, are going on. And Wikidata is essentially indexing every clinical trial in the world and then trying to bring that into uh, this um, knowledge framework. Vaccine candidates and vaccines. Uh, so yeah, this, uh, this figure was made when uh, vaccines were not yet approved. Um, then also different treatments, uh, that's like the medical part of the knowledge graph, all the me medical specialty symptoms. But there's other things like big cities. So uh, as we had seen from that uh, with giant Wikipedia template, um, we have articles about uh, the COVID-19 pandemic in lots of locations. And then in Wikidata, we have relevant data about uh, the COVID-19 pandemic in those locations. And uh, then uh, for, for tests, for instance, we have information about the type of tests, or there is lots of software tools that provide information about COVID-19 in form of a dashboard. Then, of course, yeah, uh, it's not just big cities that are affected, it's lots of countries. There, um, then, like any other outbreak, this pandemic is a subclass of a disease outbreak. There are tracing apps, and so on, and then of course the virus consists of proteins that are uh, that are encoded in genes. The virus itself is a taxon. There are various biological processes that are involved in the virus actually infecting humans, and so on. And there's a, a whole range of uh, scholarly literature about uh, all these topics, and we we just saw an example with the uh, mental health issues. So. This particular graph here provides you with a summary of how Wikidata approaches handling this particular uh, topic of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and yeah, then from there you can basically branch out into any of those uh, topics and it gets complicated very quickly. Um, meanwhile, this calculation here has finished and what it gives us is an overview, for instance, in uh, the category COVID-19 on Wikimedia Commons, we have altogether 118,000 files. Um, so these are files that are, have been classified as somehow related to COVID-19 pandemic. It might just be a sports uh, stadium that is empty due to the cancellation of a sports event that was supposed to be there, but it has some sort of a uh, relationship to uh, COVID-19. And you see there's lots of lot languages here. Um, and this number here always indicates how many of those uh, images are actually used on that particular project. So in, on the Hebrew wiki books, one of those files is being used. Then we see some of those images here. This is uh, an image you have probably all seen by now. And we see on which articles in those individual uh, wikis uh, this image is used. So this one is used quite a bit. And here's another one. Um, so this is uh, something I said I would get back into. So this is the, uh, the logo of uh, Wiki Project COVID-19, which is a mechanism by which the uh, Wikimedia community organizes. And uh, so I'm looking for the Wikidata entry here, <laughs> um, because from there we, we can also then get another uh, overview of how uh, Wikidata deals with this as a community project rather than a content thing. So yeah, we, we can scroll down and uh, there's lots more of images and for each of those images we then get uh, some information about which pages. So this, this particular one is used on 373 pages across the Wikimedia universe, um, including the Afrikaans Wikipedia, uh, which also has an article about the COVID-19 pandemic. 
So that was a brief excursion on into Wikimedia Commons to just show you um, how this entire ecosystem, Wikipedia and, and the wikis around it are interconnected. And essentially Wikidata takes the, a similar approach to Wikimedia Commons here, whereas Wikimedia Commons provides the media files to all the Wikipedia articles. Wikidata essentially provides the data, uh, or at least can provide the data for uh, all Wikipedias and Wikimedia Commons and so on for the entire ecosystem. So here we have uh, some information about Wikiproject COVID-19, which exists in uh, 21 Wikipedias and also on Wikidata. Now I'll focus on the Wikidata version. Um, so here that is uh, uh, just a normal wiki project. You see here this page starts with a Wikidata colon. So on, uh, this is also uh, the case in the URL. So um, this means that there is a specific namespace. So basically a part of, uh, of the space that Wikidata has in the World Wide Web. <laughs> uh, that is reserved for just uh, things uh, essentially for community organization. And uh, one common way of, uh, for the community to organize is through uh, wiki projects. And so here we have wiki project COVID-19. Um, what a wiki project does is it uh, assists with the um, generation of tasks with the definition of workflows. And <laughs> my son is, uh, is whistling in the background, which um, yeah, really disturbs me, but it's funny. Um, so pe people um, try to uh, coordinate the, the works that they do and uh, they also assist each other in doing this. And they can say, oh, I'm, I'm working on this, maybe you work on that and these kind of things. Or if you have a question, you can then go to the talk page, which is a common feature of essentially any uh, wiki page in this Wikipedia ecosystem. And so if you have a question about anything that is on the, the main page or like on the project page or even on any Wikipedia article page here, this one or, or any other Wikipedia article, they have a talk page and you can go there and discuss things that are, re are related to the uh, content on the other side. So about this article, you can discuss on its own talk page. And then the same goes for this uh, COVID-19 Wiki project. There is a talk page where uh, you see the latest entries just two days ago. Um, and uh, then people uh, can discuss things there. Um, in terms of structuring the information in Wikidata, um, the Wiki project actually reflects some of that. So we had the items already uh, about the, the virus, the disease, the pandemic, and all, uh, all those things that are related to them. Uh, we have statements uh, like how many people are known to have been infected in a particular location at a particular point in time, things like that. We have data models, like how do we model all this kind of data that we uh, find from uh, like out there in the wild about the virus, about the pandemic, about the course of it, about vaccine candidates and things like that. And then also um, all of this is basically concerned with how to get data in, whereas the queries here, uh, they are concerned with how you get data out. Like, how can you make use of all the data that sits in Wikidata um, in order to learn something, in order to share some insight or, or something like this? And uh, so uh, here, I'll just demo some of those things here. Um, so what I'm doing here is I am at a tool that's called the Wikidata Query Service which is a tool that allows you to basically query the database for information that uh, Wikidata has about a particular topic. And you, you do that by using a query language which is called Sparkle. And so you, here you see we have 23 lines of Sparkle, which gives us this plot <coughs> where um, the red dots in, indicate people who have been infected and the blue dots indicate people who have died. And, if we look at the latest numbers, um, so yeah, we're uh, it's it's not like the most current information, but uh, reasonably close. Um, okay, and so we have a whole page with all sorts of queries that you might have about 
the uh, pandemic and uh, an interesting aspect of uh, Wikidata that relates to something that we were discussing in another session earlier, like the usability and the languages is, you can actually um, yeah, browse this information in multiple languages. So uh, for instance, we, yeah, let's just take this panel here. Let's see what that gives. Um, Uh, it takes a while to load. It's a it's a complex page, so maybe I'll I'll, I'll just try it from here. Or yeah. <laughs> here, yeah. So here, this one worked. So here we uh we have the information uh, about this wiki project also in Spanish, and uh, it's important to note that the translation here works more or less classically, like you would translate a letter or a, a particular page on, on paper in a, in a Word document or so. Whereas uh, there is a different mode of um, of translation that I'll briefly show. So I'm choosing a random thing here. Uh, I end up in a uh, an entry about a particular street in some part of Germany. And here you see all of the uh, basically the ways in which the street is being described are in Spanish, like it's in Alemania. And uh, then I can switch here to another language, or basically let's just do English to go, uh, oops, uh, to go back to uh, what we had before. Hello. Yeah, I end up on German. Sometimes the JavaScript is less quick than what I wanted it to do. Ah. <laughs> um, hello, so I went from German to German. <laughs> anyway, funny thing is, yeah, now uh, you see uh, all the properties are provided here in German, and at some point, hopefully, I'll be able to switch back to English for the rest of the talk. Okay, now this seems to have worked. Yes, now we're back in English. Um, and here the translation process actually works differently. So once this thing has been translated into the other language, then this will always be pulled back into uh, whatever, uh, whenever there is the need to have a translation of this again. That's different from the classical way you translate one text, uh, because uh, if you translate text tra classically, you often translate phrases that you have already translated lots of times in different texts. And here we translate it just once. Okay, if that was not clear enough, maybe we can discuss it later. So I'll now have a look at uh, the etherpad again. Um, what are the things we haven't really talked about? It? Oh yeah, so there is a, an interesting write-up on the Wikipedia coverage um, from the community perspective. So uh, Wikipedia also has some sort of community journals, community newsletters. And so here you have one community newsletter from the end of April last year that goes into quite some detail on how, uh, especially the English Wikipedia, but also the Wikimedia ecosystem more generally has dealt with the uh, pandemic. So that's another channel by which you can get an idea about how the coverage of that particular topic evolved um, in, uh, yeah, on, on Wiki. Um, some things that I would really like to go into uh, as well is what we learned from previous outbreaks. That was a question I actually posed to Netha in her previous sessions. Uh, like, what can we learn from how uh, Wiki has responded to this particular uh, epidemic or pandemic? How, what can we learn from that in order to be better prepared for handling the next pandemic? Because we know the next one is going to come. And uh, here, uh, I would just like to mention that uh, there were a number of previous epidemics that are already rel relatively well covered on Wikipedia, and they kind of set the stage for um, Wiki being well prepared to handle this uh, pandemic, uh, at least content-wise. And so, for instance, we had the... Um, the Zika epidemic 2015 in Brazil, but this was preceded by smaller scale outbreaks in Oceania and specifically on the, on the Yap Islands. And all of these 
they already have their own articles, these different outbreaks they have, or epidemics. They have their own articles already. Um, and so there exists some sort of a manual of style, an understanding of what kinds of information do we need in order to describe an outbreak. And uh, the same goes for Ebola. So the, uh, the big outbreak uh, around 2014-15 uh, also has its own uh, Wikipedia entry. And here, um, for, for each of these um, outbreaks, there are certain things, certain kinds of background information that suddenly become important. So for the Ebola outbreak, for instance, it was information related to burial practices because the burial practices con uh, contributed crucially to the way the disease was spread. And that was something that needed to be an important point of the outreach um, to the affected communities because lots of people were dying. They uh, had to bury lots of people. But if the burial practices themselves contributed to the um, spread of the virus, then something had to be done about the burial practices. And it is a very strange experience if you have lost uh, some, some people that are very, very close to you and then somebody from a different country in a, uh, uh, comes to you in a very strange costume, these uh, viral um, full, uh, full body suits, and explains to you in a strange language that you have to change the way you bury your relatives or friends. Uh, that's one of the strangest experiences you can think of in terms of humanity. But still, it, it happened and it had to happen because otherwise the spread would have been even more dramatic. And so uh, the Wikipedia aspect of that was that we actually had to cover burial practices in the countries affected uh, in much more detail than we had before. And also we refined articles related to virus transmission and hygienic practices and things like that. For the Zika virus, um, the uh, thing that we had to look at was the microcephaly and it was also um, things like the, the mosquitoes ca that can transmit the disease. And for the COVID-19 pandemic, it were things like social distancing and uh, face masks, uh, where we had um, lots of room for improvement, basically gaps. But now that those gaps have been addressed in each of the uh, existing or previous outbreaks, whenever there is a next outbreak that needs to, uh, or for which it is relevant to have information on those particular um, uh, mosquitoes or on burial practices or on face masks, then uh, some sort of a foundation is already there. It just needs to be updated um, rather than start from scratch. And so while we're working on this one pandemic, we also look forward uh, to how we can uh, improve things to make it easier uh, to work on in the future. Or we also look back. So there are very detailed um, articles, for instance, about past epidemics like the Spanish flu one 100 years ago. Um, yeah, so this was like almost three quarters of an hour of mostly a monologue on my side. I can go on and we could actually still go into this preprint, but I would like to pause for a moment here to give you a chance to actually write some questions or comments here at the end of this etherpad so that we can have more of an exchange. And if I don't see you type, then I will just continue. But I hope that some of you will start to type or just take the microphone and ask directly. In the meantime, I'll close a few windows here. Nothing? Really? Still, still anyone there? <laughs> 